The topic of this lecture also is a lithium ion battery, which is basically a continuation of an earlier lecture. Uh, we were discussing about the various aspects of uh, lithium ion battery, its importance, the constructions, uh, what are the materials involved and uh, we wanted to discuss what are the alternative materials involved or the possible materials in addition to the anode which is normally the lithiated or uh, lithium intercollected graphite and the cathode uh, is once again lithium intercollected uh, cobalt oxide. So, uh, let us see whether we have alternative materials and one can use a, a, a improved version of the battery and of course, one can also see whether less costly materials can also be used replacing cobalt. We discussed this uh, particular uh, uh, figure in which uh, many different oxides or many different other compounds have been plotted uh, both in terms of uh, the voltage or the potential which can be generated out of it in terms of the lithium and the capacity. So, there are large number of different materials have been presented here and uh, as was mentioned earlier lithium cobaltite is somewhere there. Uh, then we have alternative materials, material structures. In fact, we have discussed three different structures. One is the layered structure oxide, uh, cobalt oxide CO2 is uh, an example of that, uh, is important member of that and then uh, we have spinel structure which is basically MN2O4 structure and uh, the third one is a olivine structure. Uh, the important example is LiFePO4. These are three different structures and uh, many of them have uh, substitutions in them and they can be used uh, or they have potentially, potentially they can be used from this diagram. So, three members which are very important here one is uh, uh, LiMnO2 and then a variation of that in which some substitution have been made with nickel and uh, CO2, CO2 structure in which the CO2 structure CO has been replaced by uh, partly manganese, partly nickel and then uh, you have uh, LiFeO4 uh, structure and uh, this is Mn24 structures. Others are not, although for theoretical purposes they are important, uh, but they are not that important at this stage. So, these 2, 3, 4 different compounds are being researched on very extensively. Oh, in addition, one more uh, compound uh, I will draw your attention to is Li45O12, Li45O12. This although has a very low voltage, in fact uh, 1.5 volts or so, uh, also capacity is not that high, but it has a different, uh, it is important in a different context, we will discuss that also at a later stage. So, these are few compounds which are of uh, uh, importance to us and we will see how they can be utilized uh, in the lithium ion battery. And when you are talking about uh, these kind of compounds, different compounds, the very first thing one has to find out what is the binding energy and that binding energy with the lithium uh, actually uh, provides uh, an idea of uh, what kind of voltages one can expect. So, in that context, these are the uh, different compounds, some of them have been plotted over there and uh, lithium manganese oxide or the spinel variety of lithium manganese oxide as a highest binding potential, binding energy and also the highest potential. Lithium cobalt oxide is here. Okay. So, they are quite comparable. Uh, lithium iron phosphate is slightly lower, the voltage is slightly low and then uh, you have uh, here lithium titanium uh, oxide. Okay. In fact, it is actually lithium 4 by 3, uh, titanium 5 by 3, oxygen 4. Okay, so, if you multiply by 3, in fact, it will be 
lithium 4, titanium 5 and oxygen 12 which was uh, shown uh, in the earlier picture is here, it is the same thing. Okay. So, this is fairly low about 1.5 volts whereas, this is fairly high is about more than 4 volts which is comparable to lithium cobalt oxide. So, the binding energy uh, are compared in this manner. Now, considering all these we have particularly if you are talking about cobalt if you are con uh, concentrated our attention primarily to oxide not like sulphides and phosphides. Uh, these are, are phosphates, uh, these are uh, some of the uh, oxides containing transition metal oxides, some transition metal oxide right. Transition metal oxide has a role to play uh, because we have seen earlier in case of cobalt uh, there is a valency change from 3 plus to 4 plus or 4 plus to 3 plus. So, uh, tra uh, obviously our attention has to be uh, given or uh, be paid to transition metal oxide. So, these are some of the uh, a list of uh, transition metal oxides which has a potential uh, application to replace cobalt oxide and uh, in the lithium and battery system. Now, uh, of course, all of them are not devoid of cobalt, some of them have been cobalt has been partly replaced by nickel here, partly replaced by manganese and uh, it is also uh, partly the, I think there is a repetition here, mm, this can be this can be removed. Uh, right. So, you have uh, because there has been uh, basically an attempt to reduce cobalt because cobalt as I mentioned it is a costly or economic uh, not, not an economic material. So, if you can replace completely replace or partly replace that is the basic idea. So, here nickel uh, cobalt has been replaced partly by nickel partly by manganese and uh, also here uh, partly by nickel, partly by manganese, both both nickel and manganese has been used and here completely removed, copal has been completely removed uh, both by nickel and manganese and then uh, also uh, once again there is a mistake I believe, uh, let me also remove that. Right. So, uh, both uh, nickel and cobalt have been replaced by uh, or re cobalt has been replaced by nickel and manganese right and here it is only manganese the, and this has of course is a different uh, the same structure this is the Mn 204 Mn 204 will have a spinel structure but this is also the same structure. Okay. So, these are some of the layers mixed oxides and here uh, this is the characteristics charge, ca charge discharge characteristics of a particular uh, compound which is a spinel structure lithium, lithium uh, manganese 4, okay. manganese 4 spinel structure we have seen earlier. Uh, this is the charging characteristics of that and these are the discharge characteristics under different conditions of discharging. Now, discharging is done normally done uh, at a rate of uh, designated like uh, C by 2, C by 5 or 20 C. Now, uh, just to have a uh, discussion on that what we mean by this, this is what we call the charge rate or discharge rate. The charge rate is uh, denoted as a C or C rate and uh, signifies a charge or discharge rate, okay, charge or discharge rate equal to the capacity of a battery in a uh, in 1 hour. Uh, for example, 
uh, as you possibly uh, you are aware the capacity of a battery is normally given as ampere hour okay that is the total amount of energy uh, which it can accommodate so if you have a uh, capacity of a particular battery is 1.6 ampere hour uh, the c 1c it becomes 1.6 ampere that means in 1 hour in 1 hour uh, you um, charge it fully or you discharge it fully uh, at the rate of 1.6 amp so if you draw a current of 1.6 ampere over a period of 1 hour then uh, this is the total capacity of the battery and this becomes then the c uh, a charge rate of c by 2 means actually uh, 0.8 ampere 0.8 ampere half of 1.6 would be needed for 2 hours and a charge rate of 2 c that means double the value of uh, the capacity uh, it we have to uh, charge 3.2 amperes would need 30 minutes half the minutes to fully charge it. So, it is basically the rate at which the current is being drawn from the uh, from the battery or it is being introduced or the charge is introduced in the battery or recharge the battery. So, uh, that is what is known as C rate. Uh, it assumes that the battery of course, whenever we are doing it, uh, it assumes the battery is 100 percent efficient at uh, uh, absorbing the charge and can support the applied rate. That means, uh, if you uh, charge it at a very fast rate for example, 2 C or 10 C, 20 C that means, you are charging or discharging at a very fast rate and uh, the kinetics may not support it. So, the there may be a breakdown of the structure. So, otherwise uh, this can be done in fact, that is one of the criteria when a battery is tested that is one of the criteria how fast one can discharge it, how, can, uh, how fast one can recharge it and so on. So, this provides some criteria or parameter uh, what is the rate of charge, what is the rate of ch charge uh, recharging or discharging. So, under this context if you go back to this particular curve uh, you can see the charging uh, charging is being done at a C by 2 rate okay, half the total capacity and then discharging has been tried out discharging has been tried out C by 5 and in this is increasing 20 C 20 times the overall uh, the capacity of the battery okay. and even then one can although uh, the voltage will drop obviously, because charging rate increases and the voltage will um, certainly drop, but even then you can get a fairly hard high uh, specific charge. So, M N 2 of uh, M N O 4 L I M N O 4 as an alternative cathode material uh, replacing uh, L I C O 2. Okay. So, these are the some of the typical experimental data um, which has been uh, taken from the literature of course, and uh, these are uh, uh, the possibilities. Okay. So, one can charge at a very fast rate as well as discharge at a fairly fast rate. This we have discussed and the same thing once you plot as a discharge rate is the C and the discharge capacity. So, lower is the discharge rate obviously, higher will be the capacity, but higher is the discharge rate the lower will be the capacity. Okay. So, you have to find out at uh, what rate, what will be the optimum condition under which the battery can be utilized. Okay. So, normally um, 2 C 5 C not so low. Okay. So, uh, uh, these are the typical again typical characteristics of the uh, particular cathode material which has been used of course, in conjunction with the graphite, graphite anode. Now, here is a comparison of few different uh, cathodes reference is of course, the L i C O 2 and these are number of cycles number of cycles initially of course, the uh, discharge capacity is high, but 
as the cycle change increases uh, it be, it becomes lower although we are talking about 300 600 cycle uh, capability but that is certainly uh, it l gets lower and then gets stabilized okay it doesn't continuously in decrease but compared to the initial uh, capacity certainly the capacity is lower even after about 50 cycles so that is the typical one of the typical characteristics of the cobalt oxide cathode now compared to that there are alternatives here which we have just discussed one is spinel type LIMN2O4 is one of them and LIX MNY MNO2 this is at the same structure only thing cobalt has been replaced by manganese uh, so far as the electrical characteristics is concerned of course is quite good that means it remains stable it remains stable even at the starting capacity for a long enough time or no, no, large number of cycles the uh, uh, MN2O4 the spinel structure itself has a lower capacity but it is uh, remains constant over a large number of cycles. So, compared to lithium oxide it is uh, certainly better in certain sense in this particular sense at least so far as the cyclability is concerned and uh, um, the layer structure MnO2 if you replace cobalt by manganese also has a better property. However, there are certain disadvantages of course, uh, so that uh, these are not still commercially being used the commercially the most important one is still the lithium cobaltite. The more promising one of course, is Li FeO4 FeO4 structure which is a as I mentioned is the olivine structure or thrombic symmetry, high thermal stability, inexpensive because iron and phosphorus these are the two elements here in addition to lithium, environmental friendly uh, there is no uh, cadmium or anything anything like that and lead is also of course near there and high capacity is about 100 mill, uh, milliamps per hour which is quite high and excellent cycle life. So, this is another uh, compound in a different crystal structure or a different structural with having different structural uh, characteristics. This is also a good material and the typical discharge uh, cyclability curve is like this. Here you can see uh, about up to 300 cycle it remains more or less constant. So, in that sense this is one of the LIAP. PO4 iron uh, lithium iron phosphate is one of the most promising material so far alternative to, to um, cobalt, cobalt oxide. Now, there has been a lot of consideration or research work is still going on uh, on the um, alternate um, anode material as well. Okay. So, this is our current currently used material. Uh, it has been written in a different way <coughs> is one sixth uh, it is actually LIC 6. Alternative materials are in the same group the uh, group 4 elements okay, as carbon. So, these are either silicon or tin lithium containing silicon carbon nano composites which have also much higher capacity that I will see. So, it is uh, the same group material, same group element as carbon of course, they do not have the same structure, the structure is different silicon structure is different and uh, structure of tin is also different whereas, uh, carbon is a different structure, but even then these materials do have some property of accommodating lithium or intercalating lithium uh, as in case of carbon. Uh, however, these materials undergo excessive volume change on lithiation and tends to destroy the structure. This is one of the another very important criteria this is another very important criteria for choosing the right kind of material. Now, whenever you are introducing lithium um, into the structure it certainly the, there will be some expansion because not compared to the virgin material 
uh, there will be always some uh, volume change and the lattice parameter will, um, will be increased and as a result there will be volume change. So, this volume change is certainly a very important criteria or a problem for uh, actual practical application. So, that has to be need to be considered. It happens in all the uh, intercalation compounds, uh, but uh, lithium cobalt or lithium graphite is uh, acceptable, uh, but whereas the other things also need to be understood how much one can uh, accept the uh, volume change. This is a typical performance of a uh, tin carbon composite anode. Okay. We have seen carbon anode, uh, carb uh, graphite anode can be replaced by some other composites uh, including other metals. So, this is a very good, very good uh, characteristics. Once again, we have very constant value of uh, the charge discharge characteristics, they are exactly in the same capacity and it can extend up to 200 cycles quite easily and it can go beyond of course. So, this is a typical uh, tin carbon uh, composite anode, okay, tin graphite composite anode. Of course, once we one has to also remember, although we are talking about graphite, there are many as various kinds of carbon which can be used and there are very, I am not going to the details of that, but uh, depending on the preparation condition, depending on the morphology of the material, uh, the structures or the properties of the uh, battery certainly changes quite extensively. Now, in addition to tin carbon, there are other materials as I just mentioned like silicon, silicon is also a composite, uh, silicon is a compound which can be directly used or these are nano, some kind of nano composites actually, uh, where uh, graphite and silicon can be used together. Then in addition to some more complex materials like silicon titanium nitride um, carbon composite or silicon titanium diboride carbon composite. So, these are also can be uh, used or can substitute the virgin graphite and uh, so these are again some of the characteristics of course, for a limited period and one can see silicon although it has a very high um, capacity, you can see the range of this capacity as much much higher. Okay. If you compare uh, the earlier values is about 500, 400, 500, here silicon has a value of uh, at a low uh, initially it has a value of uh, almost about 2000, but it slows it goes down with cycling and stabilizes somewhere around 400, okay, 400 uh, milliamps per gram. Whereas, if you take composite silicon carbon composite, this is happens with say pure silicon. So, pure silicon although has a very high binding energy and therefore, a much better uh, capacity, but then uh, it drops off very sharply with cycling. Whereas, these two materials particularly the nano composites of silicon carbon, these are actually nano composites of silicon carbon, uh, they have a fairly stable uh, capacity over a large number of cycling. Mm. Silicon titanium carbide, nitride carbide and uh, titanium nitride carbon and silicon titanium diboride carbon also can be used for this purpose and uh, it has a lower capacity, but stable, stable with uh, cycling. Well, these are uh, when you talk about uh, different compounds. Uh, one also has to have a theoretical values of capacity, one can find out from the binding energy and uh, these are different values, different values of the capacity, theoretical values of capacity one can expect from different kind of compounds. Uh, here is only tin, uh, silicon, lithium, uh, lithium oxide, lithium, uh, uh, th this is against tin, 
okay, uh, and so on. Silicon, uh, carbon, Li6, this is the currently used compound. Compared to that, one can see the capacity is much, much higher, okay, compared to much, much higher compared to Li6. So, other materials have much higher compound or higher capacities, uh, but these are all theoretical values. So, when somebody is screening, screening the different material, uh, one can look at the theoretical capacity, but many of them are practically not feasible, really not feasible and that is why Li C6 is still a material of interest uh, for the practical devices. However, many research is going on on different other compounds as well. So, these are some of the results of that uh, investigation. One of the problems uh, is once again as I mentioned the volume change in LIC 6 is a fairly large volume change, but that is acceptable whereas, lithium aluminum uh, these are lower volume change, but even then uh, there are because of some other problems. Okay, because of some other problems, they have not been used so far or being investigated investigation stage only. Nano uh, effect is there in this material. In fact, is very very important. One of the major investigations or research area or research interest is in the area of nano. Okay, uh, whether uh, the materials can be used in the nano powder form and they have some uh, effect on that. And here uh, only in case of a particular spinel type of uh, compound the Li Mn 204, uh, if you prepared in the micro bulk in the sense micro fine powders and these are nano fine powders, you can see a significant uh, increase in the capacity specific capacity here. Once again uh, it increases almost uh, by uh, 50 percent or more. Okay. So, um, in fact, most of the research is going on here. Uh, what is the effect of nano materials or nano structured materials uh, in improving the properties of the uh, lithium batteries? Okay. So, this is one example where nano materials have uh, improved the properties. Well, this is uh, once again has been taken from some literature here. In the, uh, this is how the construction of the cells are met. Okay. Uh, we have seen large number of coin cells, sometimes they are called coin cells, sometimes called button cells and uh, very thin cells uh, just like a metal tablet. And, but it contains a large number of components that is the reason why I am showing this. Uh, this is the top cover which is uh, a top uh, stainless steel cover which acts as a negative terminal. Uh, you have a insulation ring, insulation gasket normally may be a Teflon ring okay. and this is the top cover and this is the bottom uh, casing. So, these two in between you have large number of uh, thin uh, sheets or thin layers. Uh, this is your positive electrode that is lithium cobalt cobaltite that means the cathode. This is the cathode and, uh, and um, this is the negative electrode. So, this is basically this is the single cell. Okay. You have a separator a very thin separator containing the electrolyte. This is the layer very fine layer of graphite and this is a uh, cathode layer the positive electrode and they are all sandwiched between these two casings. Okay. And this is the electrolyte sorry no, this is the liquid electrolyte soaked or the uh, porous material soaked in liquid electrolyte. Okay. So, this sandwich structure actually forms the cell and these are actually uh, stainless steel spacer, this is a spring and finally, uh, through this it is connected to the top layer. So, this becomes your negative terminal, 
this becomes the positive terminal and in between you have an insulator, insulating gasket which separates the top cover electro electrically separates the top cover and the bottom cover bottom casing. So, that is how one makes a coin cell uh, which is extensively used in many electronic uh, gadgets or electronic devices. In addition of course, uh, one thing we should also mention all these things are actually produced in powder form okay, whether it is a uh, lithium graphite or lithium cobalt both of them are prepared in actually in the powder form. So, they are coated they are coated on some substrates uh, normally on this side uh, is a copper foil and the, on the other side there is a aluminum foil. So, uh, they are actually screen printed screen printed on this. So, basically the materials are in the form of powders. Okay. So, it is not in the form of discs or any plates. Uh, so, they are powders coated on some substrates. So, therefore, uh, nano powders has a very important effect because nano size powders increases uh, or decreases the um, uh, the uh, the electron sorry the lithium mobility or uh, the uh, in fact it increases the lithium mobility the interaction distance. Uh, becomes uh, finer and therefore, uh, there is an enhancement in the properties. So, since we are talking about powders only in the solid state, so certainly the nano powders has a much finer much larger uh, specific surface area. So, the interaction becomes better and the uh, charge transfer becomes much faster. Okay, so, that is one of the uh, considerations and that is what we call the coin cells. The another of course, there are very different kind of shapes of the uh, lithium cells like many other rechargeable batteries. The standard kind of battery here is cylindrical here the of course, they are produced in a completely different manner it is a, uh, it is a uh, similar to tape casting process very similar to tape casting process. So, there are rolls the rolls of uh, the, the three different sets one is the cathode and the anode and the separator. So, all of them are rolled together and then in the form of a coil put in the form of a cylindrical set. So, that is a, a different uh, these are not discrete discrete seats, but there are um, there are continuous seats which can be rolled together to form a cylinder. So, that is how the cylinder is prepared. Well, with all this uh, let us come to uh, the discussion of uh, major applications. I am sure uh, most of you are familiar with that. Uh, these are cell phones one of the largest applications are different forms of cell phones uh, iPhones and iPods and all kinds of electronic gadgets, uh, communications and so on. Uh, other in important area is the laptops and notebook computers almost all computers particularly laptops and notebooks do have uh, this uh, lithium ion batteries rechargeable battery that is the, you know one of the uh, very important component of the whole system. The digital camera almost all digital camera requires uh, battery and they are all rechargeable battery earlier rechargeable batteries were nickel cadmium now they have been replaced by lithium batteries. Many uh, uh, electro entertainment electronics also requires uh, lithium batteries camcorders that is also requires uh, lithium batteries these are all. Uh, low power applications you are not drawing very large currents. So, the rate of discharge is relatively low and however, if you go to rest of the applications the rate of application rate of discharge and the uh, power capacity um, is uh, uh, is very high. For example, if you are talking about power tools power tools require a large 
uh, energy, uh, but it can be uh, made out of uh, lithium batteries. Then the most important driving force for development, the further development of lithium batteries is here. It is the electric vehicles or the hybrid vehicles, sometimes hybrid vehicles, all those uh, prototypes are there already. So, the driving main driving force currently for development of the lithium ion battery is the electric vehicles for the future. And how much uh, as uh, and the requirement is completely different compared to uh, the current range of applications where you are requiring only low discharge rates. Here you need a very, very high discharge rates and total capacity also have to be very large so that uh, the range of the vehicle can be increased um, to a, uh, a reasonable extent. So, for that you need a completely different materials as well as different uh, structures, structures of the powders, uh, not the crystal structures, but the morphology of the material. And in that context, nanotechnology is playing a very, very important role. So, nanotechnology, particularly nano powders of different shapes and sizes of the same material, maybe lithium cobalt or uh, graphite or other, uh, other spinels or the um, uh, olivine structures, the phosphates, iron phosphates and so on, uh, they are primarily concentrating, their research is primarily concentrating in the area of morphology of the powders. How the morphology of the powders uh, can influence the properties. So, not only the crystal structure, but the morphology of the powders, the fineness, the uh, shape, size, the surface area all of them have a very important role to play in uh, looking at or in, uh, in the performance level. The other area, uh, this is also same for if you are talking about the defense and space applications, because the energy density is very high okay, per kg of material you have a very large energy density comp, uh, much uh, larger than any other form of battery. And therefore, space application is a very important application where uh, you need uh, space vehicles and the weight is a very important consideration there. In defense also uh, in some of the applications particularly missile applications and so on, you have a tremendous importance of lithium battery because one of the major driving force is the uh, power to weight ratio, you have a very high power to weight ratio and therefore, uh, in all these applications uh, air, airborne, airborne systems whether it is a missile, whether it is a spacecraft, uh, whether it is a satellite all these uh, have a very important application areas for lithium ion batteries. However, another uh, important area which is coming up is because of the renewable energy. We are generating a lot of uh, uh, power through our renewable uh, source either solar or wind or uh, wave and so on. Uh, so, um, the storage is a very important issue there, storage of batteries. There are many different forms of storing by, uh, electrical energy, but lithium battery once again is a very efficient storing device and uh, lithium they are also important for as uh, storage for renewable energy. So, uh, lithium batteries along with solar energy is a very good combination, a very good combination uh, for generating power and storing it uh, for the uh, off, off periods. So, these are uh, the uh, important areas and that is the reason this is one of the most active area of research materials research so far or at this point of time. A current production level about 2 to 3 billion units per year which is a very high level compared to many other batteries is fairly large number. Okay. So, this is uh, so far as the um, applications areas are concerned. Uh, finally, we will come to what are the future directions, future directions 
a very interesting. Uh, there are two aspects as I mentioned, uh, so far the developments are concerned. Uh, one is uh, of course, the anode and cathode material and also the organic electrolytes. There are a lot of research is going on whether the electrolyte can be replaced by some other organic materials or better organic materials, but I have not discussed here that um, kind of work. What I am want to point out here, uh, we have discussed this as the cathode material and uh, we have seen some of the results where graphite has been used as the anode material, right. But there is a possibility in this also is a cathode material, okay. this is also a cathode material which can replace lithium cobaltite, right. but its voltage is very low, it is about 1.5 volts or so. So, compared to graphite, if you compare with graphite and this becomes your cathode, then the voltage is about 1.5 volts. Whereas, compared to graphite, this has a voltage of about uh, 4 volts, very close to 4 volts right? uh, or 3.5 volts or so. Since the mechanism of both the materials, the lithium intercalation is more or less same, the attempts now being made whether this can be used as one of the electrodes uh, or the anode. So, this can be used as one of the anodes. So, here uh, which the material which was originally developed as a cathode material, now it is being used as an anode material. So, this becomes anode, so completely replace graphite, this becomes your anode and this becomes your cathode. Electrolyte remains same. So, this kind of a system will give you a voltage of about 2 volts, which is much lower than uh, 4 3.5 volts normally available with uh, lithium battery, but it is still a interesting system. It is still an interesting system and lot of research is going on in this uh, kind of uh, with this kind of material where 2 volts is low. So, the capacity will be reduced, but the materials are very uh, abundantly available. One is titanium, iron, phosphorus. So, it is not restricted by the by the uh, non availability of uh, cobalt. Uh, of course, graphite is an abundantly available material, but it has its uh, has some other problems. So, this is one system which is being tried out for the future systems and of course, the charge discharge characteristics is important. So, although it has a lower uh, EMF open circuit voltage, but still this can be an attractive uh, system to start with or investigate. Then you have uh, another system again the same material, but here the cathode is replaced with the same anode, but the cathode is replaced. So, you have about 2.5 volts, so that the voltage can be increased to some extent. So, instead of lithium phosphate, iron phosphate, the cathode can be lithium manganite, uh, the spinel structure, but the anode may be same. So, you have a possibility of increasing the voltage from 2 to 2.5. There is one more system which is also being thought of. This is once again the same anode. So, the anode has been common, but the cathode instead of manganese, only manganese or iron phosphate, we have. Uh, this manganese has been replaced by partly nickel. So, lithium nickel manganese and uh, that gives you a voltage of about 3 volts. So, these are some of the systems which uh, can be tried out and have been tried out and people think that these are possibilities for the future. The most important thing in any of these there is no cobalt in it. So, the cobalt is one of the bottlenecks and that can be avoided in all these systems. And uh, uh, the volume change of the graphite, the volume change of the graphite is can also be avoided. Okay. So, one is the volume change of the graphite can be avoided here. Uh, if one sees uh, the 
earlier curve, the volume change of the graphite is quite large here. So, that can be avoided and if you go back to our earlier uh, diagram of the po uh, possibility of different materials like this, here is this I was mentioning earlier that this is which has been originally thought of as a cathode material compared to the graphite. Now, we are talking of this becomes your anode and all these materials here can be used as a cathode material. So, you can see here is your uh, lithium iron phosphate compared to this. So, this becomes the voltage here this is 1.5 volt and this is close to about 3.5 volts. Uh, so, it becomes about 2 volts or 2.5 volts. Then you have uh, this one, this one is an, this couple is another one and this couple is another one, this one and this one. Okay. So, this is another interesting uh, direction in which the research is going on. So, it started with graphite and lithium cobaltite. Now, we are talking about different couples, different systems, okay. different uh, cathode, uh, different anode and a different cathode, another cathode. So, this is uh, what actually uh, the development is. These are the three systems on which uh, the work is now current, currently on and um, maybe some of them are useful for the future uh, generation of batteries and the future applications. As I mentioned the future application the driving main driving force is high power applications. The low power application is more or less gas saturated the electronics application, but it is now the high current applications or high discharge applications. Uh, which are of uh, importance. So, with this we complete our discussion on uh, battery, the, the lithium ion battery and also the systems related to energy technology. Earlier we have discussed the fuel cells, then we have also discussed how the hydrogen can be produced using the advanced materials some of the electrical properties of the advanced materials and now we have just completed the discussion on lithium ion battery. As you can see there are many many different uh, oxides and uh, carbides as well as borides or nano composites which can be uh, very conveniently used for these systems. So, it is materials research which is actually the key to the success of this energy technology systems. Uh, with this uh, we come to the end of this lecture and thank you for your attention.